Happy, happy, happy to everybody that's listening to the sound of my voice. You know what you're listening to, right? FM 104, AM 1240, WAB in the tree, where we truly are treating the music, the culture, and the conversations. Listen, I'm your girl, Talisa Franklin. You already know what's going on. It's Wow Wednesday. And Wow Wednesday on today for our Mental Health Awareness Week. I don't know about y'all, but this week has been a great week for you to really dig deep down inside and say, mm, I need some help. And you picked up that phone to all you all that thought enough that you knew you needed help in listening to Mental Health Monday and Tuesday. Thank you for picking up the phone for saving you, right? We can save ourselves by having the initiative to say something is not right. And I need some help. And so here is on this wild Wednesday. Listen, pastors, clergy, all y'all that's listening to me, y'all better listen today, right? Because we have some amazing leaders here in our city has been champions for mental health and especially uh, people of faith, y'all. We love Jesus. But you know, I tell y'all, I, tell you, I got Jesus and a therapist because I understand I need one, right? Y'all know I'm all over the place. Let me go ahead and welcome this amazing couple change agents in our city that is truly doing the work of Christ here in our beloved city is the one the only the bishop y'all the bishop y'all heard the real bishop and pastor Diane Young of the healing center and I'm telling you their church their ministry represent the name in which God gave them healing welcome welcome pastor and bishop how are you all we're doing we're great doing great I'll tell you your excitement is Contagious. It is contagious. <laughs> well, thank you. Look, look, I, I just try to do what I know I'm doing, right? I just love people. And so this topic that we have this week, you all, uh, mental health awareness. And I know so many times we don't want to deal with mental health. And so before we dive all that, I want people to know who is Bishop William Young? Who is Pastor Diane Young? And so then they'll understand why they need to open up their ears and hear what thus says from the young. Go ahead and tell everybody who you guys are. Well, I'm uh, uh, Bishop William M. Young of the Healing Center. Uh, my background is in uh, pastoral care and counseling. I have a degree uh, from Memphis Theological Seminary. I went on for a doctorate at Louisville. Uh, I'm also uh, in the state of Tennessee, a supervisor of supervisors uh, for those who are trying to get their credentials. Uh, my background really started uh, at Western State Mental Hospital in Bolivar, Tennessee. Uh, I, I started working there in 81. Uh, left there and went to Methodist Hospital and became the first black chaplain at Methodist Hospital. Uh, after I left Methodist, we started the work uh, called Greater Fellowship Faith Tabernacle in Bolivar, Tennessee. And then we moved to Memphis and we, 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 we were going to call it the Healing Word Center. But a lady I was talking to who was in leadership Memphis with me, she said, why don't you drop the word and just say healing center? And at first I was, you know, I, I was so strong in my faith, I wanted to hold, but then I thought about it, that people wouldn't understand exactly what it meant, but it could deal with healing of all kinds. And our theme is Jesus is the healer of all kinds. We've had many, many experiences where people have come and God has made uh, great transitional changes in their lives. Uh, one of the first things that happened uh, late on in ministry was a young lady about 40 years old got up under the cross and took a pistol and blew her brains out. Yeah. Uh, she had asked to see my wife for counseling. And but before the next morning, she had gotten about 6.30 and uh, uh, took her life. And so uh, that began uh, the first Black church and suicide conference. We first had uh, about 50 people 
then now the last one, we had over 500 at the University of Tennessee. Uh, I've worked with clinicians. I work with church leaders uh, all around the area of the mind. Because uh, if you are not careful about what you think, your thoughts can kill you. Uh, there's a book called Your Thoughts Can Kill You. And uh, it, it, it's kind of a backdrop of what we do. We, we uh, not psychiatrists, but we are doctors of the mind. Uh, Jesus himself was a physician, a great physician in, in, in the gospel of, of Luke. Luke was a physician. And uh, the therapeutic uh, value of the word of God is transformative. Uh, it changes you. And I'll jump in right there. Uh, um, I'm the pastor and I work we work together with uh, dealing with people that need help, uh, who need to be made whole. So we are doing all of the work and I administrate, I set everything up, I kind of uh, be sure that everything happens that happens. Uh, right now, William mentioned the suicide, the suicide on our grounds. It was, it, it, it was a moment that, we felt like all the eyes of Memphis were on us because here we are talking about counseling and here's one of our members that takes her life on our grounds. How, what is God doing? That was the question, God, what are you up to? And uh, even uh, the moment was tough, but it, through that we met people from across the country and we were saying that black people don't commit suicide, that was our line. But we found people mm -hmm. across the country, uh, Donna Barnes, who will be here with us in June, and I'll talk, tell you about that later. But, but Donna Barnes had lost her son to suicide. She's a, she's a doctor there at uh, Georgetown. Is it Georgetown yeah, they University? they have an organization called NAPCAS. Mm -hmm. They deal with black, black suicide. Black suicide. They, they connect it. Uh, because many people were saying, that black people don't commit suicide. And they do. And and, and their rationale was, uh, we've been through slavery and we were tougher than other folk. But we found out the reality is that all people uh, take their lives when they become hopeless. It's all about hopelessness. Now you, of course, Bishop, you said something that kind of stunned me to know uh, that that young lady uh, took her life and you know, just, Last week, uh, I, I was very transparent in the church uh, when I heard about Regina King's son took his life, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, when I got, when I was, and it, you know, of course it was at Saturday and at Sunday. So I was literally so transparent to the congregation. I said, you all, I hurt. I said, I'm telling you all, I believe that you can't be so holy that you don't be real with yourself, right? And I start seeing my life through the lens of a young Regina King. Uh, been in media for a while, but there's still some other levels I know God is going to take me. And I said, Lord, what would it look like? I didn't got to the pinnacle of my life. I didn't mm. got to where everybody know my name, where mm. everything is flowing good. And my son do something like that. It matters nothing to me no more because the one person that you love is gone. And so I could not wait to on that Monday to call my therapist. I said, I think I need to come in and talk, mm -hmm. right? Because I knew I needed to have a conversation to talk it out so that I wouldn't keep feeling those feelings. Mm -hmm. And so many times, Bishop and Pastor, we as a culture, we feel like we can't talk to nobody. You know, I shared this, anybody know me personally, now I'm able open uh, to share my journey because God has given me my platform so I can share my journey, I can share my truth. Uh, right. I remember when my grandfather passed away, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I was in a really dark place and I knew I was in a dark place like after the burial, right? I knew I was in a good place. But mm -hmm. because people will say, if you go to a psychiatrist or somebody, you crazy. So mm -hmm. I end up going to see uh, help for a whole year and told nobody in my family mm -hmm. that I was going. And I believe 
to this day, because I went and got me some help when I was in a bad place of grief, it helped me because some of the things that I learned through my therapist at that time uh, was able to apply them to my life that I could still flow. So help us as a culture that we have something happen to our son life. We have that person that has always in the protected our everything and we that vowed to be with us forever, but not knowing there's no forever, right? Unless you be with Jesus the Christ. Uh, how do you handle for that person that's listening to us now? Y'all can hear from the people that really, really know. You know, I just look, I talk, you know, I just love to talk, but they for real about this thing. But I love to talk, but I want to have conversations of change. But what would you do to help somebody that's dealing with grief? Because COVID has been crazy, uh, running rapid in our family. So you got the children that lost their me moms, their mamas, their daddies, their aunties and uncles. Then you right. got uh, parents and lost their children uh, for whatever reason, and they're not folk. They're not focused on living now. Only the thing they're focused on dying. What will you say to them to help them understand that yes, we need Jesus. But we also, God has given us people like yourself and others to help navigate, to refocus them, to reshift them to where they need to be. Well, first of all, I'd say uh, that they all got to acknowledge the reality of the loss. Mm -hmm. uh, grief is normal, it's natural, and it's also necessary. If you don't grieve the loss, you'll get sick. You internalize all those feelings if you don't take uh, 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 stages of, of acknowledgement to another human being. Yes, we tell God, God already knows, but you need to tell another individual. The second stage in the grief process is that you have to experience the pain. You don't get through pain unless you feel it. Allow yourself to feel. Feelings don't tell you who you are. They just tell you uh, how you feel. You hurt. Uh, but if you allow yourself to grieve, you, you'll eventually be able to move to the next stage, which is you have to learn how to live without whoever you've lost. Now, that's very tough, learning how to live uh, without uh, Johnny, uh, Big Mom, but uh, you don't want to get in the coffin with him. You you say you you want you want to go with him, but I ain't seen nobody get in the grave with him. So you will get over it if you allow yourself. See, God has fixed you so that you it's not your time to go. You may feel like all hope is gone. But if you allow yourself to experience the pain, uh, accept the reality, eventually you'll get to the place where you can reinvest that energy that you had in the deceased back into another living relationship. Wow. So many what women, would, I'm many, sorry, Bishop, okay. go ahead. Many women uh, who have lost their husbands or husbands who lost their wives, the Bible permits them to get married again. And you know, if you said that my uncle daddy, which is the pastor of our church, right? Mm -hmm. When uh, when my aunt passed away, he was in a really dark place, right? And I didn't realize how dark he was, right? Until one day he shared with me, he was going to the cemetery every morning to eat breakfast. And he was in a really dark place and he was a pastor. He was telling everybody else to be strong, but he was yet crying. And sometimes uh, we will be having a conversation before you know it. I said, oh, now you ain't finna start this crying again, right? And I, <laughs> you know, I'm just silly like that. And then I would make him laugh, but he was really hurting. And I was so happy when he found a wife. Oh, Jesus. I was so happy, right? Because I was, I was happy for two reasons, right? <laughs> Because she can help do some of that stuff that I had to do. I'm just being real. But I'm glad that he found somebody that can love him for real. Yeah. But, you know, so many pastors and leaders 
are dealing with that right now and they don't even know how to move on, right? They're just stuck. They said, well, I ain't gonna never be married again. I ain't gonna never do this, baby. It yeah. ain't, it was not God's desire for you to be alone. That's just me now. I ain't no, I ain't no real therapist, but I got that much sense to know that you don't want to be alone, right? And so how, how could you, Pastor and Bishop, share with the faith leaders, uh, give them some encouragement, because many of them right now, they know they need the help, but mm -hmm. they're afraid of saying they going, and I, I, I help people. So why am I going to help somebody else? I'm going to pray about it. Baby, when you get through praying, you see a hurting and crying. And like my uncle running down that cemetery every day, taking breakfast, honey, mm -hmm. sitting on the back of the truck, trying to have a picnic at the funeral at the cemetery. Now, mm -hmm. for me, I was like, if I knew he was doing that early on, I probably mm -hmm. would have said something. I, and then I would tell him all the time. I said, oh, you need some, you need some grief counseling. He's like, I'm okay, T, I'm okay. I'm like, dude, you ain't okay, right? And so help the faith leaders uh, how to move past so they can continue to live and don't feel ashamed. They may need to come to you in confidentiality that you guys are going to help them. Yeah. First, first I say, don't push them. Don't push them to be where you are. Allow them uh, to be able to to get to that point. You can bring information uh, to them about where they can get help. I have a good friend of mine who's pastor of a large church. Uh, he brought him, his son to me. Uh, then he came and see me himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we knew everything was gonna be com confidential, but, uh, and, and he goes around and tells people, <laughs> Mostly young, man. <laughs> and uh, a lot of past friends out here, uh, you know, if they have members, they know that my background, they know that I was a chaplain, that I've worked with professionals, and that I'm not trying to steal members. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's one of the challenges that you have. People don't want, want their members to go see nobody because they think they're going to lose a member. And some people actually do proselyte and uh that's not yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not that's the not thing we that we do with therapists we will not keep people with us uh -huh. we will send them back and most pastors know that mm -hmm. and and but but when it comes to people uh talisha getting the help that they need william said it best if you know you need help you can get help but you have to be the one that decide i'm going mm -hmm. to get the help that I need. There is help out here. And as far as, as, as in our setting, we, it's, it's faith-based. So you can, you know, it's, it's, it's faith-based, but it's still therapy and you, and you may need it. And William's trying we, to say something. Uh, we have every month, we have a citywide grief session. Mm -hmm. People who have lost people and sometimes pass the symptom Sometimes they hear about us, but we have just a conversation where I'll give information and I'll be the therapist in the, in the room. Mm -hmm. And they talk about their feelings and I listen at a deep level and reflect to them what I hear. I, 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 I hear their words, but I also listen at a depth where I can feel what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And we do that every fourth Thursday evening. And so mm -hmm. I'll send you the information about it, Talisha. Yes. We do yes. that. And uh, many, during this season, it has been a season of loss. Especially mm -hmm. with the yeah. pandemic going on. Yes. And people still suffering. Yeah. And, 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 and it, it was just, it's so much mental health going on right now because people that had stopped doing things started back to doing them. You know, mm -hmm. people that used to drink, they started back to drinking. Mm -hmm. People that used mm -hmm. to carouse, they caroused again mm -hmm. because this this pandemic was just made people just get out of sync with God. Right, right, right. We all find our way back there, and we can work through some of these emotions, some of this stuff that's happening on the inside of us, and. Mm -hmm. That's where we come in. You know, we can do a quick screening on people. We got a, we got a screening that will take less than a minute so we can see exactly where you are. And then we can do a complete screening and then make a decision. Do you need to 
there are some people that will need medication and they mm. need to get to a place that they know that if if you need a faith aid, you got your faith, but you need <laughs> your faith need an aid. And there could yeah. be that pill that'll get your get those chemicals balanced out and then you can get back to, to, to life again. And that's so, what we do with this. So tool. you said something and I definitely wanted to touch on it because it has been big for me to tell people understand, know the difference between mental health mm -hmm. and mental illness. Because mm -hmm. sometimes people feel that I'm not crazy. Uh, I ain't taking no medicine, all this. And you feel, and you all out of whack. You're doing some of the craziest stuff that don't make no sense to yourself. And then later on down the road, you're like, I didn't mean to do it like that. Something wrong with you, boo. You that's listening to me, FM 104, AM 1240. You know something wrong with you. Get you some help, baby. I know I got some issues and I got some stuff to give me some help. Help the folk, Pastor and Bishop, the difference of mental health and mental illness, because some of y'all need some pills. <laughs> first, first, first of all, I dropped the word mental. Uh, I, I, we call it emotional wellness. Words have value. Yes, sir. Well, I won't call them. When, you say, <laughs> when you say mentally, mentally ill, nobody's going to claim that. Okay. Not even the ones who... Who, who, you know, who, 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 who really belong under yeah, that yeah, banner? Yeah, so they, 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 they don't want. They, they don't want. They and don't so want to we, hear that. We 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 dealt with it, it, these words. If you say emotional wellness, it's easier for people to think of just like you go and get physically well. You can become emotionally well. So All right, now, y'all listen to the bishop now, because I say, you know, something else, but the bishop said, yeah, yeah, right, I, understand, I, understand. I, I understand that there, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. There is a difference. And, and, and most of the people who, who take their life have some mental problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's called stigma. You know, when you, uh, even if somebody, does commit suicide or take their life, there's stigma on the whole family. We, 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 got so, we got so much to learn. Yeah, we do. So help us with that, Bishop. Well, stigma, stigma uh, is how you treat the person while they're grieving. Mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't say anything to them. And we don't need to do a whole lot of talking anyway. What we need to do is do more empathetic listening. Uh, you know, just sometimes, just say I'm here to listen. Go and go and do things to help them, and every now and then, just listen to what they're saying and reflect what you hear. You know, we need some listening skills. Y'all better, y'all better listen. I tell people, y'all hear me, but y'all ain't listening to me. Y'all know y'all ain't listening to me. I tell you some stuff, honey. Honey, I'm an open book and I ain't trying to close it. So, uh -huh. Bishop, you said something <laughs> mental, uh, emotional wellness. Emotional yeah. wellness. Yeah. My words have power. power. <laughs> like my song. You all that's listening to me, some days I have emotional wellness going on in my life. So, Bishop, I want to help the people. Because somebody right now that's listening to us, whether they listen to it live or they listen to the replay, and they may have contemplated taking their own life because of the situations, maybe contemplating and taking their life because uh, Sam Sudi don't want them no more, but he wasn't worthy of no way. Uh, they may have contemplated taking their life because with COVID that went on, they feel like they have went into a downward spiral. They're not uh, socializing. Help somebody right now that is dealing with contemplating taking their own life and let's help them give them a reason to say you matter. 
your life is worth living. This mm. is just temporarily. You mm. have a plan. God has a plan and a future for your life. And don't listen to the devil. You have to put the devil in his place because you have a, you have purpose. And then God has given people out here like yourself that's want to help you walk through and refocus your life so that you can see your life the way God sees you. Help somebody today that's really been contemplating um, suicide and just never had the mm, to do it. Uh, but they heard, they could hear a word today that can change their life forever. Hmm. Well, I, I, I'd like to tell them uh, there's hope and there's help. Uh, when Job was going through, he had three worthless counselors. Instead of listening to his pain, uh, they wanted to condemn him and call him a hypocrite. Uh, I got a sermon on a preach Sunday. When Job prayed for his friends, those same hypocrites he prayed for, what happened, and you find it uh, in, in, in the, I think the 42nd a chapter of Job, uh, you, you see when Job prayed for his friends, not only did he get released, and get blessed, get the double blessing. But his friends got off the hook. Wow. Because God did it. He started with God, it ended with God. Mm. There's awesome. hope. And I would jump in there to Lisa and I would tell them that even though they can't see it, there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And what they need to do is keep moving. Just mm -hmm. don't stop, because if you look around, mm -hmm. then you're going to get distracted. But know that at the end of that dark tunnel that they're in, there is some light. Mm -hmm. If they just keep moving, just keep moving. And you may slow down a little bit, but move. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I remember that Bishop William, Pastor Diane Young of the Healing Center is encouraging today. And I'm standing with them. There is hope. There is light. There is life. And listen, whatever you're going through, please, ma'am, please, sir, please, brother, please, my sister, get the help that you need. We need you to survive. Somebody is depending on you to survive. Mm -hmm. Do that for us, y'all. And so, Pastor and Bishop, I want you now, let's deal with that person that maybe that family member has taken their own life. Mm -hmm. Now that family member is here saying, why didn't I know that they give me any signs where I was I too busy taking care of everybody else? I didn't hear that my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, my mama, my daddy, my auntie, my uncle was in trouble. Uh, and so now I'm beating myself up because the decision in which that person decided to do an end of life on their own. Right. Mm -hmm. So that person that is yet living. How can you help them mental uh, deal with their emotions? Because I'm sure their emotions is all over the place of a shoulda, woulda, coulda, uh, thinking they could have did one thing. They may have gotten there early. They may have taken the gun out of their hands. They may have took the pills out of them. So kind of help that person that is dealing with that side of grief and it's uncontrollable grief because they just, thought they could have made one action or maybe if I would have got to him or her earlier, there would have been a different result. Kind of help that person because people right now are beating themselves all the actions of the choices that somebody else made thinking they could have made things differently. Hmm. Well, the, the only thing that prevents grieving is guilt. And uh, I would say to them, you're not guilty. Uh, I think that same question was posed to Jesus. Uh, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even if Jesus had, had been, been there, he's eternal life, he's, uh, Lazarus still was going to die. He died. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you're not responsible for their death. It's called neurotic guilt. 
let yourself off the hook. Hmm. And go ahead and go through the grief process. And, and Talisa, they do need a good support system right now. Um, that's where I would say find a good support group. Uh, and, and one of the things that we have in the state of Tennessee is the suicide prevention network. Yeah. But, they but, could but reinvest see, their energy. But where, where she's talking about right now mm -hmm. is what's holding them what's up. What's holding them up. I got and you. that's the reason I, I'm, I'm I understand. emphasizing this part. I got you. I got you. About guilt. Yeah. They, see, they, they're not going they, they to going, going nowhere until they, until they the deal with this guilt. I got you. That's the process. You got to deal with the order, the process there. See, guilt will not let you grieve. Mm. So why won't guilt let, help us with that, Bishop? Because somebody's like, okay, what do you mean, Bishop? Guilt won't let me grieve. And I was like, Bishop, but I forgave myself. I forgave myself, but I'm yet still yet holding on. Kind of help us, Bishop. Cause some folks slow like me, you know. I finished in school, I got a couple of degrees, but some of them, Bishop, woo wee! I tell you, I still had some challenges. <laughs> well, well, first of all, if I was counseling with them, I, I would ask myself, "What are you guilty of?" Well, I say, Bishop, I, I, I tried. You tried. But they didn't let me try, Bishop. I tried. I kept going. I kept praying. I kept going to the altar. And why God didn't do it, Bishop? I can't tell you what, what, what God can only answer. You have to ask him. But I can tell you this, that God permitted them to make this choice. Mm. See, God doesn't make any of us do anything. He wouldn't be God if he wasn't a God of choice. Yeah. Wow. Bishop, you deep. <laughs> I listen. That's why I brought him, because he's deep. <laughs> Pastor Young, he deep. He shuts me up. And you know, too many people can't shut me up. But I see the Bishop got a way of shutting me up. I'm just trying to open you up. <laughs> she knows you, how to play. Because you see, you what you brought to the table were real life issues. And I deal with this all the time. Mm -hmm. I thank the Lord that I'm uh, able, after all this 47 years, to still be doing this. Okay. I didn't just start. Yeah. When I worked at Western State Mental Hospital in Baltimore, nobody even remembers that. You had thousands of patients, uh, people who would take a garbage can and knock themselves in the head. Guy who would pluck their the eye out. I worked on a ward like that, where some of the patients would break the legs of the attendants. So if you could work at Western State, you could work anywhere in the country. You had to love people, cause uh... <laughs> they, they wouldn't even got no reservation. They wouldn't got the deuces. <laughs> so, Pastor, so I wanna I wanna deal with this a little bit longer because with COVID, people have been out of church. Mm -hmm. I have never seen so many folk before COVID said they love God, they were saved and sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost. And one storm that came through their life, they forgot about Jesus. Hey, Zeus, God, Yahweh, and all. And now they're blaming God. They're mm -hmm. blaming uh, Jesus the Christ because of the decisions that maybe um, somebody in their family died, and especially right now because of COVID. They died because of COVID. And now they mad at everybody. So I ain't never going back to church. I asked the Lord to heal them, and God didn't heal them. He ain't doing this, and he ain't that, and he... So I need you to help that person that is struggling. Because, you know, my uncle said something in reference to my granddaddy. He said he remember asking God to heal God, heal, heal daddy, heal daddy, heal daddy. And then God gave him a revelation. He did heal you, heal daddy. He healed daddy on the other side. 
Mm-hmm. And so daddy had cancer. We saw daddy go through some really challenges in life. And I think sometimes we as human become selfish that we want to keep them here. But what they want that quality of life if mm-hmm. they're yet here. And so mm-hmm. now because God didn't keep them here, you mad at God. And mm-hmm. now you ain't in church. You ain't nowhere. So now you done picked up the bottle again. Now yeah. you you smoking that marijuana again. You mm-hmm. drinking like you is no tomorrow. And you mad at everybody. So I'm just not going to church. I'm not doing it. It's all a big flop. This, that, and other. Help somebody that's dealing with that today. And so they can understand. You can't be mad at God for what God did. Thank God he kept you here. Well, I, 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 I would take a different side. I, I would tell them they can be mad with, with God. Mm, okay. Help I, us. I, I let them, because uh, uh, ultimately, if you listen to them, see, anger turns people off, but it doesn't turn God off. That ain't God. <laughs> <laughs> well, Job, Job, Job had the same, same kind of issue. Mm-hmm. He said, God, I want, I, want, I want a conversation with you. And and when he got to God, God shut him up with one statement, one question. He said, where were you, Job, when I started this thing? When I yep. flung the stars into the air? Mm-hmm. When I started the oceans to, to move? Where were you, Job? And Job said, I spoke too soon. And that's what, that's, that's, that's what happens with people. When they get angry, they're speaking too soon. Mm-hmm. That's that's the first uh, emotion that they feel, and they get locked right there in anger. But they ain't getting no rest, because if if you ever known God, your soul ain't gonna find no rest until it find rest in Him. Mm. My God! Wow. Wow. Is that deep? <laughs> That's deep, Bishop. That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> Main thing, if they're angry with God, Talisa, uh, they can be angry. Just don't stop talking to him. That's it. Because That's he'll it. show up if mm-hmm. they just keep talking to him mm-hmm. and through their anger. And 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 as you would put a, a painting that picture of of us in this hour, this hour of the church is going to require a deeper level of commitment from leadership. And I say that because, you know, we got so many people that have declared themselves as ministers and ministry goes beyond standing behind that sacred desk. And right now we're going to need ministers in the trenches because no more jack in the box prophets. Y'all stop. (laughs) They don't want to wind up jack in the box. Come on, uh, pass. I'm just had to tell you cracker jack prophets. (laughs) <laughs> we need them in the field right now. We need we need them in the field because it is going. The harvest is plentiful. The laborers will be few. Yeah. But see, I I I I I see this as whether you call or whether you went. If God calls you, you can't do nothing but preach. Mm-hmm. Paul said, "For necessity is laid upon me that I do this thing." That was my first sermon. Practice what you preach. Mm. Coming out of Paul's writing. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, but uh, an old old black preacher told me, he said, if you don't have to preach, don't. You, wh- what are you running to? You run into pain. And and yeah. if you if you ain't called, you certainly can't be equipped. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and Pastor, let's deal with that because <clears throat> many people now have self-called themselves. The internet, I think, has been a bad for them because they've been able to go on here and get them some pieces of paper and yeah. say that they was this, they was that, they ain't got no oil. Now they didn't, and, and they may, you know, I go back to the scripture, bodily exercises profit little, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't laugh at me, Bishop. I try to be good because you go, you you hearing me real good. You ain't just missing. <laughs> <laughs> you you hear me? I, I you 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 got me real good today. But 
they they going online, they getting all this, establishing these churches, and then now they get on social media and they got a good height, they got a good hoop, and then they mm-hmm. start profiling the folk. But all they doing is looking in their inbox and, and looking in their they social media, and then come back and prophesize to them. And some people are so hungry for a prophecy, yeah. right? I've never seen so many people that's hungry, and I believe that's that's emotional imbalance. You're mm-hmm. you're you're so hungry for somebody to tell you something that you can tell yourself mm. Mm. you know but then that tells us there's something not going up here in our psyche something going on in your mind that we waiting for somebody else to tell us what we should already know about us and then they say it's like it's like oh, the big revelation it ain't no revelation they just repeated what you said you know i tell some of my girlfriends that's single i said baby when y'all go out on these days shut your mouth up what you mean, Talisa? Girl, shut up. You going to tell Joe Blow <laughs> everything that, that that he needs to know, and he going to come back and tell it to you and repeat it to you, and now, oh, you in love. You done forgot about God. You done forgot about your commitment. You know he ain't got not one job. Let's not be able to provide for you to pay mm-hmm. your condo, but you happy because you just told him what you wanted, and now you in love. Yeah. You love him so much, you're a man without a right. Mm-hmm. And you go to Walmart and get a wine for the pennies on the dollar, you know, mm-hmm. but there's something going on in our mind that we're searching for love and we're looking for love in all the wrong places. And when we get to that place of, mm-hmm. uh, of Oz, there's nothing right. Mm-hmm. Then they get mad and say, I just want, I'm embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to deal with it. So help mm-hmm. us with that person. They done went through all this stuff and mm-hmm. they done did all these things. Now in their emotional being, they are embarrassed. So they think the only way to walk away from this embarrassment is to take your own life. I tell people, I do the things I ain't proud of. I tell mm-hmm. y'all, y'all don't have to tell it on me because I ain't going to let you make me feel bad about none of my choices mm-hmm. because I serve a God of grace. I serve mm-hmm. a God of forgiveness. And once I forgive, mm-hmm. I forgave me. And then God forgave me and put in a seal of forgiveness. Baby, I ain't going fishing for mine no more. I'm just going to tell you it's out there. It is okay. That's right. But but you have you have come to a place. And that place, everybody hadn't gotten there. It's a journey. That's why I suggest that people find them a therapist uh, to go along with their physicals every year. I think you need an emotional screening every year. I, I, that's one of my prayers is that we'll get to a place that we will screen people every year to see how they how they are. We, we need a checkup uh, from the neck up. You know, we need that kind of checkup just like we do it uh, from the neck down. So we need to check that part of us out and see just how we're doing. And um, those issues that we have, those, those things that we're going through, we need to talk about those things. You may not be what what uh, you would call out there, uh, but you may have some form of uh, emotional distress, and you may need the chemicals. Maybe it may not even be that. You may just need uh, to have talk sessions. Mm-hmm. You may just need uh, uh, some to someone to talk to to get it out, so you can get through this. So. We're just suggesting that you don't allow yourself to, mm-hmm. to die emotionally. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't allow yourself to do that. Get the help that you need mm-hmm. so you can live this abundant life. You want to live the abundant life? It's going to take owning your stuff because if you don't deal with your stuff, your stuff going to deal with you. I, 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 I think the reason many people don't come back is because of pride. And what, what I tell them, I, I say, get you a tall glass of water and drink it and swallow that pride and come on back. You, you know, uh, a lot of men don't want to acknowledge that they've done wrong. But I tell them, with enough water, it'll go down. <laughs> It's, it's pride. It's, it's pride, you know. And pride goes before a fall. Yes. It, 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 life is too serious now. And we, 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 we're standing on the verge of uh, his coming back. Here we are. 
And uh, a lot of folk ain't thinking about that. Yeah. But the same way he went up, he coming back. Yes. Yeah. And we know a wise man. <laughs> Well, That's why I, I hang know. with him. I, 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 I think you did great, Pastor Yo. You, you picked a well, baby. Only you the I've yeah. been running with him. Just been trying to, to just squeezing, uh, squeezing all this info out of him. And, I looked at him crazy, and I said, "That's gonna be my wife." <laughs> oh wow! Well. Yeah. She, she's a teenager. She was a teenager. Yeah, yeah younger yeah, he, than me. Yeah. Now it's about about eight years. Yeah. It's eight years difference in our ages. So. Oh wow! So so, so, so his classmates call me the teenager. teenager. So yeah. I'm hey, I'm living in it. I'm living <laughs> that right now. You know, when you get this old, somebody call you a teenager, you eat that up. Girl. You better eat it all up. <laughs> It'd be but fun. Lisa, I'd see. like to I'd like to mention. Uh, last year was supposed to be the year for suicide in the black church. William made mention of suicide in the black church that was birthed out of our member taking her life on our grounds. Mm. Um, that was actually almost 20 years ago because we do it biannually. And so this will be the 10th National Suicide in the Black Church. And we are going to do it virtually, which will open it up to more people uh, being able to attend. Uh, but it will be on June 15th and 16th, 2022. And we, at, at, at that time, we bring some of the best professionals across the country uh, together in one spot. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been doing it at the University of Tennessee, mm -hmm. and we've had uh, people from all over the country yeah. that would come and address that issue. Yeah, it's going to be powerful. And so we want, um, I'll, of course, you know, I'll get you the info about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, so so you, your audience can be a part of it. But I don't know, you know, we have a free clinic to where people can get free health care. Yeah. So let's go through what I want to do. We got about 15 more minutes and I know I want to touch on the black church, but I want to go through the services that you guys offer step mm -hmm. by step. Let's just take a, a, a snapshot of all the services you offer, why you offer them and how people, and especially the free services, because so many people need help but don't believe help is free and they may not have the financial means to get the help that they need. So why don't you guys start on going through those services, Bishop? Let, let, me, let me just say this. It's free, but it's quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, when they hear free, they think, they think, it's, it, think it's, it's just half done. Something. But we have some of the top physicians at University of Tennessee who are directors of the program. Yes. yes. Rhodes College provides social workers, uh, Memphis State. Uh, we have, uh, we give away food. We give away uh, shots. Yeah. And we do testing, uh, you know, whatever kind of medical condition you have, you get free services there. Yeah. Uh, and, and this past week, we had a man that was about to die. And uh, his life was saved because he came to the clinic. That's, uh, uh, and, and that has been something that everybody who was there was just so proud of that uh, they were able. He was actually on death row. And, they, and he actually came, hadn't gotten any, hadn't been getting service because when people don't have insurance, they don't go, you know, they don't go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And so, but he came, thank God he came that night. And so, I mean, if you have a chronic condition, they monitor your chronic conditions. They monitor uh, uh, blood sugar. They monitor, monitor blood pressure. They uh, take care. If you need legal help, we have lawyers. We have social workers. Um, and once a month, the aging commission is there. If you want to find out something about how to help your older adults, and we're just making a deal where CSA is really rental assistance. People who need assistance paying their rent, you can get it there. It's just once a month that they're on site, but they're, they're on site once a month. So, I mean, it's, a, it's wraparound services, spirit, soul, and body right wow. there. At the wellness mm -hmm. stress now the wellness stress clinic is open one night a week right now but we're in conversation about expanding that 
uh, maybe adding a day here and a day there. But right now, Monday night, matter of fact, they're, they're, they're right at this moment, they are in, in clinic, starts at 5 p.m. and goes to 8 p.m. We do an evening clinic so people can, can come in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. I said, give us the address, the website, how people can call to get engaged into all those amazing services that's transforming people's lives. They are. Mm. Uh, the, the phone number is 306-5433, uh, and that's 306-LIFE. That's for the Wellness and Stress Clinic. So all you got to do is remember 306-LIFE. And then for the counseling center, which we didn't mention emotional fitness centers, but the emotional fitness centers is where you can get an emotional screening. But we also do that on Monday nights. That's available. If you make that phone call and say, hey, well, I'm coming in, I want it all. You know, I want, I want to do that quick screening. I want to see the doctor. I need a lawyer. I need a social worker because I can't pay my, pay my rent. I don't know, have no food to eat. I need all of that. So you can come. Uh, some people come and just, it's one-stop shop and they get everything that they need. And the other line is 370-HOPE, 370-4673. So we try mm -hmm. to use names that people can remember uh, about what they do. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's life-changing. And how, how long have you guys been serving that com serving the community? 30 years. 30 years here in Memphis. 30 years in Memphis. Wow. Mm -hmm. we, we started in... Uh, last year, we, we celebrated 30 years, uh, 2021. So we started in 1991. It, it didn't seem like 30 years. It no. went by fast. I had been pastoring. I've been preaching for 47 years. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, he started. Uh, it all started with I, him. I started in, in Bolivar, Tennessee. Yeah. You ain't new to this, Bishop. You true to this, baby. You true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> My son is about to uh, uh, join our, us as uh, part of what we're doing. Part of the ministry. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're so, glad to come home. Yeah. And um, well, yeah. we've got children all over the place. So yeah. um, Paul, trying to do young. things. Uh, Paul oh, and, is so sweet. Yeah. Yes. Dorcas, Dorcas, Dorcas. I think Dorcas is serving the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we're just we're just trying to live. Uh, for Jesus, especially yeah. we in the, we in the, uh, like Randy Brown says, we're in the fourth quarter. So when you get in the fourth quarter, you should be trying to do everything you can to impact the kingdom of God. And Speak for yourself. <laughs> he ain't in the fourth quarter. I don't know what quarter he in. Uh, he said he not, he's not in the fourth quarter. Okay. If you're not in the fourth quarter, it's but okay. I, but, but I will pass it on. Uh, uh, that they can, and, and Paul will do. Yeah, let them what, do the what work. What they gonna do? Yeah, yeah. let them do the work. Right. You tell them what to do because you know what I tell some people. Uh, because I've been in business twenty plus years, and so when I get these young people, I said, "Baby, y'all can learn a lot from a dummy." I said, "Y'all think I'm dumb, but you can learn a lot from a dummy." Y'all look. I look. I ain't, I ain't new to this, but I'm to this. How can we make you're this not. thing work? No, you're not. And and we salute well, what you're doing. And uh, well, the, you, the have, message. you you have uh, such a personality that draws people yeah yeah that's what's and, important uh, that's, uh, that's, and, that's and, and important. keep telling your story uh, uh stories are powerful mm -hmm. as you tell your story and god has given you a platform mm -hmm. where you can take the mask off and you can be transparent and others somebody may be listening to us right now uh that that that, that really needs to get help i encourage them to give us a call 370 hope a 306 a life, they can get what they need right there. I mean, anything they need. If we don't have it, we will refer them somewhere else. And even after they get through with the screenings, we work together with, with the mental health centers if they need that. Uh, we work with those who are doing uh, drug and alcohol treatment. So anything that they need, mm -hmm. we'll point them in the right direction to get it if we don't have it. We're mm -hmm. like a swab, if we don't have it, uh, you don't need it. <laughs> you sure know you going next, though. <laughs> I, I just like to add one one thing here. Yes, uh, post mortem for for suicide. Uh, make sure you go through the grieving process. Uh, then accept your grief, and then 
deal with the funeral. You know, uh, in most funerals, we never even address uh, suicide. Uh, you know, and I was challenged to do a sermon when I was working in DC on the suicide prevention. I was challenged to do a, a sermon and I, I found it hard to, to do, but I found one I found in First Kings uh, where uh, Elijah said, uh, I, I think it's the 19th chapter where he says that uh, I wish I was dead, literally. I mean, not, not uh, to come to that state. And he said, I, I may as well just be where my fathers are. And uh, you'll see in that sermon how God took him from a depressed state. And uh, the angel came and gave him something to eat. And he rose in the strength. And the strength got back and he, you know, he, he was restored. So, uh, you know, I, I did finally get a sermon to deal with and address suicide. in terms of suicide. Now, the, the thing about Elijah, uh, he had been very successful, but one more straw when Jezebel said she was going to kill him, he went into a depression. Mm. Sometimes it's one more straw. One more. It breaks the candles back. But that if you if you if you want to see a way of recover, look at that scripture. My God. Thank you, Bishop, for sharing it. I'm sure every pastor that's listening to me right now, I know I wrote the scripture down. So so I can go back and study it because uh I know in the, in ministry, we never know what we walk into, but I want to always be equipped. Uh, yeah. to do what God has called me to do is hopefully bring some light to somebody's dark situation. And so Pastor Diane, give us all the information about the conference. Is there a fee? Do people need to register now? Of course, we'll be talking about it closer to uh, the event on the station, but I want to really make sure people can go ahead and save the date. This is a yeah. date that you are listening to FM 104 AM 1240 that you need to save this date. And if not just for you, but for your family, for your church, for your mm -hmm. ministry, for your office, this may be a time where y'all can shut down and get the information because many people in the workplace right now are dealing with a lot of issues, right? And they may need to understand they're having some emotional issues and let's yeah. get them solved through this event. And, and, and I want to mention that even though is suicide in the black church. We are, we address factors that contribute to that. So we'll have a session on domestic violence. We'll have a session on uh, depression. We'll have a session on grief. We'll have a session on uh, uh, bullying. We'll have sessions uh, because we had a lady who came, her son mm -hmm. took his life because he was bullied. He was 12 years old and she was one of our speakers. And uh, so we're, go we're gonna address the many factors that contribute to this. And um, people can start signing up as soon as they start getting the emails. If they want to uh, be a part, they can email us and send me their email address uh, at yhealer, Y-H-E-A-L-E-R at AOL.com and say, I'd like the information on suicide in the black church or information on what, what things that you guys are doing. And uh, we have a way that we can get all of that out to them. But we, there will be a small fee and that fee will go toward suicide prevention. One good thing this year, we don't have to buy food because we won't we won't have an in-person, we'll do virtual. So the fee that they will pay be a very small fee and it will go toward us building a network so we can help those who feel like they're hopeless and they're at the end of their rope. So it, it, it will be a fee. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna start getting the cards out this week uh, after the after the last week last week with those two suicides in the black community, yes. big uh, large, I know it's time for us to take care of that, and we will. 
So, Bishop, yes, Pastor, thank y'all. I am so honored to have you all a part uh, to share your knowledge. And I was blessed uh, through this. You have helped me even with my words. Uh, you have helped me with so many areas of my life. Because I love to have fun, but in all reality, I want to see people's lives better. There was a time in my life where my mind was not in a great place. And I, I smiled uh, and I made everybody else smile. But on the inside of me, I was hurting. I tell yeah. people I was like an egg with no yolk inside. I was really hurting. Wow. And I go back and even look at pictures of me. Even my son said, oh, mama, you look different now. And he just said, no, mama was in a bad place mentally. Yeah. But I kept seeking the help and I kept working the best practices and said, it ain't going to be like this always. And I bless God today for the anew. And so you all that's listening to me, listen, I'm telling you uh, from experience, baby, it's okay to not to be okay, but it's not okay if you won't go get the help that you need so that you can be okay. Bishop, pastor, give us your last words and how people can stay connected to that anointing that you guys hold. <laughs> Come see me. <laughs> Give us a call. Uh, either go to our Facebook page, you know, the Healing Center Full Gospel Baptist Church. They can go there and type in, and and uh, I I do I do watch that page, and they can they can even go to my personal page, Diane Marshall Young, and they can get me there. Uh, and yeah, Bishop so. Young, uh, Bishop William Young, uh, he we we all have Facebook pages, and they can go anywhere and find us, and we will definitely uh, get uh, get them the help, point them in the right direction. Remember, we are one-stop shop for help. Help oh, and yeah. Get your check up from your neck up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all that's listening to me, know that I love you. Absolutely, positively love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Make this day, make this moment, make this second. Make it the best day ever and learn how to be the best you that you can be because everybody else, I'm telling you, is already taken. Mr. Trisoration is up next right here on FM 104, AM 1240, WAVE in the trend. Be blessed is my prayer.